Still a couple of minutes left in this reel for aviation. So here's one of the most effective weapons of the air in existence, the Spitfire. Deliveries of Britain's super machine are soon to be made to the RAF, and new pilots will shortly be flying this type. Just outside the university, to ask a handful of people how much they know about the Spitfire aircraft around Southampton. Uh, not much. <laughs> I don't, I don't, is it the pub? Um, I know that they tested it, I think, from Eastleigh. Very important in winning the Battle of Britain, I suppose. I should know more, but that's it. <laughs> uh, nothing at all. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I know about it is that it's an aircraft and it was used in the war. And quite often when they have the air displays um, to commemorate Battle of Britain, then the Spitfire takes part in the air displays as well. Um, I don't actually know anything about the Spitfire, to be honest. Um, I know it's quite a big thing. <laughs> Hello. I know it's a famous plane, am I right? Yeah. yeah. And there's a pub named after it in Southampton. Other than that, I don't know too much. You know, my great-granddad used to, in the war, be an engineer for planes. He probably know a lot more than I do, but unfortunately, yeah, I just know it as a plane. Well, good morning. I've been invited to your studio today. Uh, my name is Tony Martin. I am a local resident and a photographer in the city. I have had many years in the past with the experience of the Spitfire plane. Uh, my relatives and good friends were participating during the war. We need to go back to uh, the early 30s when the uh, designer, which was Bob Mitchell, and his uh, architect friend, Joe Smith, um, gave thoughts to a single plane, single wing plane rather. The Snyder Trophy, which was in the early 30s, had prominence to manufacturing in the uh, supermarine factories along the Wollstone Coast here. Mr. Mitchell, uh, a very, very clever uh, designer, knew that with oncoming worries from uh, Germany, that a faster single, plane, single wing plane was going to be required. So he put on the drawing board and got things going and decided to um, take matters in hand at the Wollstone base here, uh, at Supermarine, and uh, came up with the idea of the Spitfire. It was so advanced. It was way above anything that we had experienced at that time. My first involvement goes back to the um, 80s when uh, it was the 50th anniversary of the flight of the uh, Spitfire at Eastleigh, at the local airport here. And uh, I was invited by the Royal uh, Aeron Aeronautical Society to do a video recording of two uh, Spitfires. And uh, being the 50th, it was uh, first flown in 1936. Well, as a, as a young lad here in the town, um, we, all, re all local residents, uh, witnessed the, the bombing of Southampton. The whole, the whole town, the main street, and the local area here was flattened completely. Uh, I can remember going to school uh, in the mornings, not knowing what was going to happen. Of course, we, we'd hear the siren taken down in the shelter. The fighting of the German and the British planes would be above us. That would go on for two or three hours, and then we'd go back to school or go home. We just had to go down to the garden, go under the shed, and disappear. So. today to ask people about their opinions on the Red Line pub and how they react to the Blitz photos. Can we react to this picture of? Uh, the Red Line pub is just I see it, yes, yes. Funnily enough, we were just talking, talking about, about, that, about the, 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 the bombings that must have been in this area during the war. Yeah. And uh, we just wondered which had survived and which hadn't. So that, to see yeah. that that survived, despite all that devastation about it, is, uh, is quite remarkable because you never know whether to rebuild or not, yeah. you know? Yeah. It must have been an awful place to have been during the time. Absolutely awful. Yeah, when, when you restore it in your original style, it's okay, but now you have a mix from the 60s and the 70s. You can look better as well. Also, the living's there. It's, it's not nice, not really nice. So 
we're at Bar Gates today and we're going to be asking for some reactions from the public uh, to what it used to look like in World War II, which was an air raid shelter during the war. And yeah. I didn't know that. It's mm. quite interesting. Is that underground stuff? Um, Underneath it? It's not ideal, is it? No. That's been there for hundreds of years mm. and they're having to use it to not die. It's not the best feeling. Well, I think it's like obviously aged a bit and it looks really. I don't know, it must have been terrifying to like build it through that time. Petrified. Mm. Well, that's the only thing I can say. Yeah. I mean, it's a lovely building, I'm just sort of saying it. I'm surprised it's still standing. I wouldn't want, really want to go through it again, but I just hope if we do, that people will club together like they did. Outside Cafe Parfait, and we're going to be um, asking for people's reactions to the Blitz photo and what they think about it now. Well, you, you'd think it was a different place. I don't think you could tell that was Southampton. How long ago was that? Uh, that was during World War II, during okay. the Blitz. Well, and it's now being used for a cafe. But yeah, shocking. Um, in terms of emotion, or when I look at the photo, it's obviously something. Obviously, I would I would guess quite vicious or violent has happened. Yeah. So it's quite a little bit of fear to think of what's happened. And it's like darkness and that as well in the foreground. Yeah, so quite emotional. No one at that time could imagine what D-Day, the 6th of June, was going to mean.